Hello everyone and welcome to the Curriculum Night 2023-2024. My name is Tom Gurren and I am your child's third grade teacher. I'm going to go through this slideshow in case you were not able to make the Curriculum Night. You can go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights of the night. A little bit about myself, I've been teaching third grade in the district for 29 years. I have a master's in curriculum and instruction. I am the creator of Curse of Characters. What I've been doing for many years is I've just been trying to create programs and create things that are fun for kids. And this was my latest adventure. And you'll, when, when you're child is working with cursive characters you'll see the things that are on there just the fun fun things we went into a recording studio studio and we had a lot of fun making it so it not only works on cursive but it also talks about character traits and learning multiplication i also developed seminars for teachers on how they can integrate technology into the curriculum your child is going to learn a lot about technology and how to use it and how to be creative with it and apply what they've learned using that technology. Start of the week. So in the beginning of the year, I talk about, I use myself as a start of the week. So I'm just going to do what a child in the class would do. So this is my wife, Mrs. Gurren. This is my son, Justin. This is Mrs. Gurren again. That is our dog, Izzy. And that is my Ra my daughter, Rachel, who lives in Los Angeles. My son lives in Mundelein. Now, when your child starts the week, they're going to be able to take pictures with their computer. They can take pictures of people in your house. They can take pictures of their room, things that they really like, or pictures of pictures of them on vacation. And then they're going to share their pictures to the whole class. They're going to share using Google Slides in front of the whole class. So they'll be showing all the pictures and talking about themselves. And then the class is going to make stars saying one good thing about that person. And then they're going to put their name on the back. And then they'll ask questions to get to know that person more. I'll take, I'll take the answers down to the questions. And then I will create a show on Friday that this thing called Look It, which is like a game show for kids based all on that student's information from the questions. Then I'm going to have at some point in the week, I'll have lunch with the star and three other students. If they can bring in $7, I will pick up a lunch for the star. So something that they like, McDonald's, Burger King, whatever, one of those places around, if they would like to, they could just, otherwise they could just bring their normal lunch or even get the lunch from downstairs. And then, like I was saying that Friday is the trivia game about the star. So every student will be star of the week and it's something that they just have remembered throughout the years. It's a special time for them. And it also is a fun time for me just to get to know them in a relaxed lunch area. It, quiet lunch in the classroom. Here is the contact information. The best way to contact is through Class Dojo. And Class Dojo is just, I get, I get the texts or the emails right away. And I can respond to you pretty quick, quickly. And it's just the, this is the fastest, best way. If not, you can email me or even call. Class Dojo, well, I will also have a lot of the activities that the students will be doing. Some, a lot of the hands-on type things. Our most recent was our play where the children were reenacting a chapter that we read from a story called Sideways Stories from Wayside School. And you'll get to see that tonight if you are here. And it will also be on the class dojo. So you can always take a look at class dojo and see the things that are happening in the class. 
I will be sending you a weekly schedule in the class dojo. So every Sunday, usually I send it out, you'll see the schedule of what we're planning on doing for that week. Now, I mean, I get to all of these things, but it gives you an idea of what's happening and you can ask your child to, to reiterate some of these or just to let, to talk about some of the things that they learned and have done in, in the class. So looking back at that schedule, the first thing they do when they walk in is they have lunch count. I do attendance, they start morning work, and then we do a zone check-in. So how can you help yourself? How, how do you feel this morning? And this gives the students a, a chance to talk to others. And then we go over ways that they can get to this green zone, which is the <coughs> ultimate zone I'd like them to be to learn <coughs> the quickest. And classroom management, there's majors and minors. You'll, if a child does receive one of these, you will be notified. We also, we are also doing bulldog values, which is new this year. So the students are getting to learn what they are. And here's a copy of what these values are. And we talk about these th throughout every day. And actually when the students come in, when they have SEL, which means social emotional learning, they have activities that also reinforce these values. Class Dojo is a way that I can give students positive reinforcement for those things that I really want to see in the classroom and the values that they are, that I just shared on the, the slide before. Students get can receive points individually or as a whole class. Students do not lose the points, but when needed, they will have to practice a behavior that is not acceptable. So if they're not doing a behavior, for instance, they're always messing around the line. I may put something on our, the class dojo, which is a zero point, means there's no points, but it allows me to keep a track if they're doing this a lot. In which case I will have to have them, in this case with the line, I would have to work with them during the recess on how to act to line up, how to actually line up the correct way to reinforce this and to practice the way, the acceptable behavior. They receive, the students will receive a, a reward for after they get to 10 points. So 10, 20, 30, so it's in tens. Right now we're working on this little class pet, desk pet. So they have these little canisters on their desk that they can earn these little class pets and put them in there. And we'll also be doing other things like making slime, just doing other fun, crazy activities that they get rewards for and notice for their positive behavior. The curriculum, math to start off, the instruction starts off with basic computation. I haven't given any homework out, but I'll talk about the homework sheet and students will be writing down homework. And once we get to multiplication, that's going to be the major homework is just mastering, try to master the facts. And I will be giving a lot of ways to study to help them in fun ways, because I believe that in, when the students are having fun, they're going to learn quickly, they're going to learn quicker, and they're going to hopefully retain that information. Homework could be, be we may do some reading activities for, for homework. The majority will be multiplication facts, and sometimes there's going to be a project, like making a robot, some fun project that will be for homework. And usually that will be over the weekend, which I will not give any other homework over on Friday except for a fun activity that really doesn't even seem like homework. They're going to learn many strategies, and the, the goal is to power through. If you don't know something, keep working at it, building stamina and grit. In the end, your child will choose the best strategy for him or her. So they're going to learn different strategies to solve problems. Some of these may be 
n not, um, re you may look at them and say, I didn't learn that way. And that's true. I didn't learn that way either. But this, these strategies are just different ways to look at it. And your child picks the one that's best for them. Assessments are district wide. They have, there's chapter tests and you will get those tests back once they've taken them. And what happens is after the students take the test, I input it into the computer and it goes to the different types of standards that are on the report card. And basically that's how the report, the standard based report card works is after we give these assessments, everything is, the computer does all the work for us. I have to check through and make sure that there's no mistakes but it just really focuses in on the different standards in math, reading, social studies, science. In reading, the students are working with the traditional reader. All of this stuff is also online. It's called McGraw-Hill. And students can get there by going to their waffle. And we call this the waffle. It's in Google and all the Google apps are on that Google front first page and students can get to this and all the, the digital information, the students are learning as, as we go. There's a lot of them and a lot of them are just easy clicks either on the Robert Crown website or they also could be on what's called their Clever account, which they have programs on that. Vocabulary, phonics study, grammar skills, working on different comprehension strategies and skills, writing projects. And again, there's going to be district-wide common assessments. Students, I'd like them to really be reading a lot. We're going to be doing some, doing a lot of practice to help them become more fluent readers and just faster. And then we're also going to work on slowing them down when it's time to be able to comprehend material in order to comprehend it. So they're learning something called a KWO, which is a keyword outline, which just makes an outline of the story that they can go back just a few words. They go back and they're able to summarize what they've read, whether it be fiction or nonfiction. I will talk more about this later when we talk about class news, which will be coming up. Okay, in spelling, there's a program called Red Words. These are, well, there's a program called Orton Gillingham. This is where they're going to learn spelling. And we're going to be doing things each day, working in sand with their fingers, writing, sounding things out. And they're also, and this is something they did in first grade, second grade, and we're continuing it in third grade to more advanced levels. They also will have red words, which they had in those younger grades. These are high frequency words. This will be set up in a program where they will be able to do this on their own. So they work at their own rate. And this is the part, the traditional memorizing the spelling words. That would be the red words. The other spelling words, I'd like to teach them and have them learn spelling rather than memorize it. And then finally, incorporating all these spelling skills they've learned into the writing. Writing, they're going to be doing a lot of different sentences using graphic organizers to help them. They're going to be writing a narrative, expository. And use, I like to, with their writing, I, I like to pair up something exciting, uh, a project. For instance, the robot is a how-to. What does your robot do? What are the three things your robot does? And they, were, they actually design the robot and then create three things that it does, imaginary things that it does. We also do a lot of extended response to reading. So after students read a story, they have, they have multiple choice type questions and then they have one extended response to the reading where they need to formulate their thoughts and complete sentences and be able to answer the question fully. Okay, cursive characters. This is just something that you can take a look at. They're going to learn cursive. We're not going to be spending every day doing it. It's more of a, 
an activity for them to do when they're finished with their work. Science, the topics that we work with are weather, motions and for motion and forces, electricity and magnetism and life cycles. So again, I really want to incorporate a lot of hands-on type projects to this. They will be doing some lots of STEM connections. They'll be working with coding, life cycles. That's where our chicken embryology unit comes in. And if everything goes well, we end up catching chicks. And then the, ki the kids can share what they've learned to other students. So they not only get to share what they've learned, but share the chicks. And it's just an exciting thing for the younger kids because when they come up to third grade, they know that that's going to happen and they're excited about coming to third grade. Social studies, again, we're working on these topics. And again, I they will be learning how to read the book. It's at a higher level for a lot of them. So I do incorporate, again, a lot of hands-on activities to help them understand this more complicated content material that's in, in the text. Okay, so assessments, there are different types of assessments the students take, paper, traditional paper, pencil, sometimes they'll be doing online assessments. They're going to be, there's a standard based report card and social studies, science, reading, writing, rubrics, and math quizzes are all part of the standard based report card. Also, the students take map testing three times a year. And that map testing is really beneficial because they take it three times each year. They took it last year. So the test really gets to know who they are. And you'll traditionally see improvement through fall, winter, spring. And as it goes, you'll see it will improve each time. And then at the beginning of the year next year, usually there's a decline and then it continues to improve. And you see the progress throughout the years. If your student is taking that map test, they and they're get, they get something wrong, the, pro, the, the program adapts to whatever they have done. So if they get one wrong, it'll become easier for them. If they get one correct, it becomes more difficult, more challenging. They will also be taking the state test and the state test is, well, map testing is good for me because I'm able to see what they've done and get a pretty much immediate result. The state testing, I do not get the results. Um, this is more of an assessment of the school. Class news and homework. So every day they're going to be taking home that plastic envelope. And in that envelope, there will be any kinds, anything that the office needs to give you, I need to give you notes, things like that. All that will go into that plastic envelope that they should be taking home every day. Also, if you have something that you'd like to give to me, that's the place to put it. Inside of that envelope, there will be a class news and homework. And these will be copies back and front. And the homework is they'll be writing their homework on this. And then the class news, this is going to be something that they're going to be trying to write little keyword outlines of things that we've done throughout the day. When they get home and you ask, so what did you do in school? A lot of times the students will say nothing or I don't know. Well, this class news will hopefully help them be able to express to you something that they've learned or something they've done throughout the day. And I'll keep these throughout the whole year. And at the end of the year, I'm going to put them together to create a book that they can take home and they'll have all the memories of the things that they've done in third grade. They have not been doing this yet, so this is going to start next week. Okay, snack, birthdays, and parties. Would you like to be a room parent? You'd be helping plan crafts, games, organizing donations, and best of all, making a difference in our classroom. If interested, please go to Robert Crown. Room parents are definitely appreciated. They really, 
if two parents want to get together to team up to be a room mom or room parent, that's a great idea. Um, it's just a fun, the students just really enjoy the parties and the room mom's job is, I really appreciate and so are the kids. Now, as far as the food goes, there will be no food allowed at the classroom parties, no outside food may be brought to celebrate birthdays. So no candy, nothing like that. Please do not send birthday party invitations to school unless your child is inviting the entire class. Okay, so that's another rule of the school. We do have snack in school and we, so just making sure that the snack is healthy. The snack we do, the snack at around 1040, 1040 to 1050. Chromebook, I would, I, I think you should keep the cord at home. From what I understand, that cord being bent up in the, in the case and constantly being put back in, bent, put back in, it ruins it. So if you can leave it in a central spot in your house where your child knows where it is and it's plugged in, they can charge it fully each night, bring it in, and that is is good. When they come in, they have, have it charged up. If they ever do need it charged, I will have a few chargers in the class. You could take a look at the other rules. If you need to report Chromebook problems or damage, please fill out a help desk ticket, which is found at the Robert Crown website. I even have to do that if there's a problem with their computer. So if you see something like that, I, I can first try to help them fix it then I'll go through this, but if you are you have other questions and you'd like to put a help desk ticket, that's where you would go, the Robert Crown webpage. Google Classrooms, if we ever need to have a day off, I've worked with the students about how to get onto this. We're going to be using these things for different, different activities actually in the classroom, but if there's ever a remote learning day, they will be prepared to go in and use this. Here are the Google Meet expectations if we ever need to go there again. The next slides are all information about from the special teachers. So you could take a look at that on your own. And that's it for me. If you have any questions, please feel free to Contact me through Class Dojo, email, phone call, or CandyGram, whatever you'd like. It's my pleasure sharing this with you, and I look forward to getting to know you and really working with your child to help them become the best that they can be and to have a great experience in third grade and at Robert Crown.